You know, the word the Lord gave to me for this, week, for this month is, I mean, there's a passage. When he ascended on high, he did what? He led captivity captive. But he didn't stop there. And he did what? He gave gifts unto men. So your gifts with him, you will receive. Your gifts that men are sitting upon, you will receive. His divine promise for your life, you will receive. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 19 from verse 29. And it came to pass, when he was come now to Beth Fig and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you. In the wheat at your entering you shall find a colt tied. We are on yet never man sat. Lose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you lose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord had need of him. We have been discussing what we call the journey to fulfillment. The journey to fulfillment. And we came upon this passage and said, as Jesus uh, verse 28 said, he went up to Jerusalem. And I know we discussed what it means to go up. And what happens when a man is said to be doing what? Going down. And I know there's someone here today who will go up in Jesus' name. Amen. I said you will go up in Jesus' name. Amen. And somebody will say to be going down is a consequence of disobedience. It means we are not walking in consonance with God on this journey to fulfillment. On this journey of destiny, you will not go down in Jesus' name. Amen. Then last week, we started talking about that place. We said, he came across. The Bible says, I mean, uh, he, he went nigh to, a, to Beth Fig and Bethany. And I was asking us, which is the correct pronunciation? Is it Beth Fage or is it Beth Fig? So I went and looked at my Bible one more time. And I realized that the, the Greek pronunciation is actually Beth Fage. But English as written, I believe, is what? Bet fake. And if you have a third pronunciation, it's acceptable. Amen. So we said bet fake means a place of unripe fruits. And that means it's a place where you wait. It's a place where you do what? You wait for the fruits to ripen. And you realize that Jesus Christ waited there. He waited and he sent his disciples on an errand. Go to the city against you. There is an animal there that is meant for destiny. But you know what? In this church today, there is a child of destiny. Amen. In this church today, there is a daughter of destiny. Amen. We don't, it's a cult. The cult has no name. And you see some funny pictures everywhere. None of them is a picture of that cult. Is that not so? But that cult served a very important purpose in destiny. But you have a name. Tell somebody you have a name. name. You will not be anonymous. Amen. I say you will not be anonymous. Amen. So we said, it bed fake is a place of waiting. And then we began to look at some things that happen in the place of waiting. We said a place of waiting is a place of the renewal of strength. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They, shall, they will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. And then we said number two, a place of waiting is a place of encounters with God. And specifically we said what? Divine encounter. And we give the example of Exodus 24 from verse 16 to verse 18. Now, narrowing it down to the experience of Moses. And then we mentioned, though we did not discuss further, and then we are going further in it today, number three, that a place of waiting is a place of revelation. It's a place of what? In Exodus 24, verses 12 to 13, we see that the Lord called Moses and said, Come unto me into the mount and be there. So Moses was told to come into the mount and do what? And be there. So he had to wait for the Lord upon the mountain. We are told when the Lord came, the instructions he gave him, it wouldn't take a whole day. But Moses was there for 40 days. 
So out of the 40 days that Moses spent on the mountain, the actual encounter he had in terms of mouth to mouth with God was maybe one day. But he was in the presence of the glory. He was in the presence of what? The glory. Very important. And that's what we are called to do. We are called to come and stand in the presence of the glory of God. Because when you stand in the presence of the glory, it does what? It rubs on you. Amen. You cannot encounter the glory and remain the same. The Bible tells us that God gave Moses some uh, revelations on that mountain. In Exodus 25, verse 8 to 9, he was still on the mountain. The Lord said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Now verse 9 says, according to all that I show thee. See, when the Lord shows you something, that is what is called what? Revelation. It's a place of revelation. According to all that I show thee. After the pattern of the tabernacles and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make them. So there is a pattern, brethren. And that pattern you cannot know except it be what? Revealed unto you. The place of waiting is a place of revelation. Do you know why many of us run around in cycles? Because we did not wait to do what? To receive the revelation. You are running a race for 10 years. And you are happy because you are in motion. You are not necessarily making progress. You are what? You are in motion. It's like in the book of, is it Deuteronomy chapter 6? Or rather chapter 1. That the Lord was talking to the children of Israel. He said, you have walked around this cycle long enough. Every walking, every motion without progress. The Lord will terminate your life today in Jesus' name. Amen. But when you wait and you receive the pattern, what is a journey of 20 years for some might be a journey of two days for you. Do you realize that? Because some people, the journey they are running, the race they are running, is a race of trial and error. Oh, maybe this will work. And if it doesn't work, then go to the next one. Oh, maybe it's this one. If it doesn't work, go to the next one. It's an acceptable way of life, humanly speaking. But brethren, God has a better way. Tell somebody, God has a better way. And the better way is rooted in what? Revelation. The place of waiting is a place of revelation. That's why the Lord kept telling Moses, See, when you go to Exodus 25 verse 40, he said, look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shewed thee in the mount. When you have no pattern, whatever you are developing will not conform with divine expectation. But there is a pattern. It's not there is a pattern. And that's why for every problem a man can encounter in life, there is a solution in the word of God. True or false? There is a solution. The problem with us is that we cannot wait to receive the pattern that will do what? That will give us the solution. Because waiting is in the presence of God. We have all had the story before of our general verse here. When he was doing his PhD thesis in applied mathematics. And he said he had equations that he didn't understand. And for you to get your PhD, you must solve a problem that has not been solved before. And he had a series of equations. And he looked at them, looked at them, he closed them, and just left it aside and said, let me do my devotion. And he picked his Bible. And he opened the book of Joshua. And he saw that when the, 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 the priests put their feet in the river Jordan, the Bible says, the river Jordan did what? Parted. And immediately God spoke to him and said, that's the solution to your, to your... I said, what? How can the pattern of the Jordan be the answer to a mathematical equation that will give you a PhD? He said, the Lord told him, go and pick your book. And he picked it. And started start looking at the equations again. And he realized that God just told him, this one to the right, this one to the left. And he, he began to sort it out. 
At the end of the day, all the equations he had to which he could not make any sense were divided into how many? Into two. And he saw that those on the right had something in common. Those on the left had something in common. He said the equation he had been grappling with for months, he sorted, he solved within two hours. And it was such that he said when he put his pieces together and they sent it to the external examiner, the guy looked at it and said, give him his PhD. His own lecturer now said, no, you can't do that. You cannot get a PhD without doing what? Defending your thesis. And the man said, who is the expert? I am the expert. I said, what? Give him his PhD. Where did he get the solution from? See, brethren, there's revelation. The problem with many of us is we read the Bible and it's just an ordinary book. The Spirit of God is not involved. So we miss the revelation. From today, there shall be a divine transformation. From today, the revelation in the world will be your portion. From today, you begin to make what is called accelerated progress. In the name of Jesus. Number four, the place of waiting is a place of divine transformation. A place of what? When you look at Exodus 34 from verse 29 to 33, the Bible says, when Moses came down, Exodus 34, 29 to 33, when Moses came down, he did not know that his face was shining. He had had an encounter with God. He had been transformed. But he himself did not know. But those that were looking at him began to uh, stay farther and farther from He was moving closer to them. They were doing what? They were moving back from him. He said, this man, the man that went to the mountain, we know. The man that has come back, we don't know. I said, come close to me until Aaron said, my friend, your face is shining. Tell somebody your face is shining. You know, there's, there's a song you sing that says, I can see the glory of the Lord. Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Descending in this place to bless someone like you. Man, that's my way. Since you didn't sing it, that's... <laughs> the glory will shine upon you. The glory will transform you. The glory will make you a new person. Man will see you and say, you are different. People that have denied you will say, I don't know what. I don't know why. But I just want to bless you. Tell somebody you are a blessed child. I am a blessed child. I am a blessed child. Jesus makes me a blessed child. I am a blessed. So if you are blessed, it's because of who? Jesus. The place of waiting is a place of divine transformation. In Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 to 3, the Bible says, After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and he brought them to a high mountain, and he was transfigured before them. That is, he was changed before them. And the Bible says, his face did shine as the sun. His raiment was white as the light. He had the same encounter that Moses had on the mountain with the Lord. It was a changed person. It was the beginning of the fulfillment of the prophecies concerning his life. You know what? The Bible says you can have the same experience. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, For God, who commanded the light to do what? To shine out of darkness. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. He commanded the light to do what? Shine out of darkness. Maybe you want to pause there a little bit. What is darkness? Darkness signifies Problems, troubles, limitations, hindrances. When you are in the dark, you don't know where you are going. When you are in the dark, you don't know what you are doing. 
The Bible says there was a darkness that came upon the land of Egypt when the children of Israel were there. And for three good days, the Bible calls that darkness palpable darkness. Darkness that you can touch. They could not move. Wherever the darkness found them was where they stayed. But the Bible says God commanded light to do what? Do you know what that means? It's not like you and I. You go and bring your, uh, is it torchlight we call it now? Flashlight. I believe every, uh, every phone now has a flashlight, right? You take your flashlight, you put, I mean, you, so that you can see. But the Bible says God commanded the light. To do what? From where? Out of that darkness, he brought out the light. Only God can do that. Because when you look at it, you look at darkness. You are looking for light. Say, ah, Nepa, bring light. So that darkness can disappear. God said, no, that is the human way. There is a divine way. Out of this darkness, I will bring forth light. Whatever you are going through, brethren, there's a glorious solution. Amen. And the Lord is saying unto you, out of this darkness, the light will shine forth. Out of this darkness, you will be encouraged. Amen. God will give you a word. Amen. I say God will give you a word. Amen. So that when you see that darkness again, you are not afraid of it. You remember what Samson said? He said, out of the eater has come what? Something to eat, something sweet. The eater, the lion that is supposed to kill, out of the carcass of the lion, something got honey that he ate and he lived. Oh, that darkness has come upon you and its intention might be to destroy you. But I want to tell someone here today, that darkness cannot destroy you. Amen. That darkness cannot see your end. Amen. The light of God will come through it. Amen. And your testimony will be glorious. Because the place of waiting is a place of transformation. Whatever you are going through, is God trying to bring out a new you? Tell somebody a new you. Tell the person a new me. So when you are through with it, brethren, by the time Jesus finished this experience that he had, the Bible says God had highly exalted him. And given him a name above every other name. That had the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven. Of things on earth. Of things underneath the earth. Wherever your problem is. The name of Jesus has addressed it. Amen. Wherever your limitation is. The name of Jesus has touched it. Amen. Now it's time for you to move forward. And this month you will move forward. Amen. That's what this month I will move forward. Will you will move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Because that darkness can no longer limit you. Amen. Out of it is the light that will take you to your destination. Amen. The name Bethany means house of misery. House of what? So Jesus Christ came against two things. Beth Fig, which was talking about an unripe situation, a place you wait, and Bethany, that means house of misery or house of affliction. So take your choice. <laughs> when you don't wait to receive the plan and purpose of God, you walk into misery. Misery is not your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. I say misery is not your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Affliction is not your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Beside the house of all our fruits, which takes you to destiny if you wait. It's a house of misery that wants to take you away from your destiny and make it impossible for you to fulfill. But I have a word for someone here today. You will fulfill destiny. Amen. I said you will fulfill destiny. Amen. Let's bow down our heads. Let's bow down our heads. The journey to fulfillment. Are you in church today? You've not given your life to Jesus. There's an opportunity for you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life because I must run, I must successfully navigate this journey to fulfillment. That's why the Bible says, 
Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. You have started, but it's not enough that you have started. It's more important that you successfully complete this journey. Why don't you talk to God? Talk to God. If you have not given your life to Christ, you cannot run a successful journey. You can't run a successful race. If you've not given your life to Christ, the darkness will limit you. But if you're giving your life to Christ, out of the darkness will come out the light for you. If you're in the house and you want to give your life to Christ, please raise up your hands. We are going to pray together. You are watching us online. You want to give your life to Christ? Just pray with me. And say, Lord Jesus, I come before you this day. I say, come into my life. Come in today. Come in to stay. Every agreement I have with the devil, I tear up in the name of Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. Let your blood avail for me. Let my journey to fulfillment be established today. And take me to the realm of light. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now we are going to rise on our feet because I have some prayer points for us to pray. Tell somebody I will pray. I will pray. Or if you don't want to pray, tell your neighbor, I don't want to pray. Amen. Amen. Let's begin to thank God. Let's begin to thank God. It's very important. Let's begin to thank God. Bless his holy name that he has brought you here today for a reason. Brethren, it is the Sunday before Easter. And God has a plan and a purpose. Magnify the name of the Lord. Magnify the name of the Lord. The Bible says there was a cult that was tied down. Brethren, the destiny of that cult was tied until Jesus sent and said, lose him and bring him. You are going to pray. Say, Father, whatever is tied down in my destiny, lose today in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Whatever is tied down in my destiny, let there be a divine losing. Lose today because I must make progress. Because I must move forward. Because I must sing a new song. Whatever is tied down in my destiny, lose today in the name of Jesus. Lose today. Lose today. Whatever is tied down in my destiny, Father, lose today in the name of Jesus. E parabasotole and ragabo. E bakatole mahandaria. Zima kalos ke prosotole and ragabo. Whatever is tied down in my destiny, lose today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. You say, My glory that is tied down. Lose today. In the name of Jesus. My glory that is tied down. Hey, Marakatoli Mahanda. In Jesus' name we are praying. That prayer point is very important. See, I've, I've shared with us before. You are shining like a candle. When you, be, you should be shining like what? You should be shining brighter than you are currently shining. Tell somebody you should be brighter. Than you are currently shining. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not talking of your beauty. You are beautiful. I was going to say, tell someone you are beautiful, but so that one brother will not go and tell a sister. <laughs> Amen. But there is a place proposed for your glory. And you will get there in Jesus' name. You will pray that prayer again. Say, my glory that is tied down. Lose today in the name of Jesus. E caraba soto le andragabo los tude los tude maras ke poria andragaba sokatenda idragabo my glory that is tied down lose today in the name of Jesus thank you heavenly father in Jesus name we are praying that cult was only relevant because Jesus was going to use it there were many cults in Israel we don't know any of, about any of them except that one. You are going to pray. Say, Father, Father let, me let me not lose my relevance. Ah, open your mouth and pray. Let me not lose my relevance. Let me not lose my relevance. My relevance. Eh, Marabasoto. Yepa Kakoto Linda Itragabo. 
Let me not lose my relevance, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, let me not lose my relevance. Let me not lose my relevance. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Say, Father, baptize me with your fire. And consume whatever is tying me down. Baptize me with your fire. And consume whatever is tying me down. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Baptize me with your fire. Consume whatever is tying me down. Me parabo skalian ragabo. Baptize me with your fire. Hey, Marike tele masoto lendaria. And consume whatever is tying me down. In the name of Jesus. Baptize me with your fire, Lord. Baptize me with your fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Let your fire touch my body. Let your fire touch my soul. Let your fire touch my spirit. Touch me, O oh Lord. Make me whole. Let your fire, let your fire, let your fire touch my body. Let your fire touch my soul. Yes. Let your fire touch my spirit. Touch my spirit. Watch me, oh Lord. Make me your one more time. Let your let your fire touch my body. Let your fire touch my soul. Let your fire. Oh yes. Watch my spirit. Touch me, oh. Lord will touch you today in Jesus' name. If there be any sickness in your body, the power of God will touch you and make you whole. Amen. You will not live here the way you came. Amen. You will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Amen. When they were going to untie that coat, there was a man nearby saying, why are you untying the coat? And they said, the master had need of it. You are going to pray. Say, any man Questioning your work of destiny in my life. Father, silence them in the name of Jesus. Anyone questioning your work of destiny in my life. Silence them. Silence them. Ah, Marabasatoli and Ragabo. Anyone questioning your work of destiny. In my life, Father, silence them. Lord, silence. In the name of Jesus. Silence them, O Lord. Silence them. In Jesus' name, we are praying. There is something called the watcher of the kingdom of darkness. What do they do? They limit progress. So they will ensure that, no, no worry, you pay your rent, you eat, you sleep, and you wake up. And in fact, you send money home. And we are living a good life. But if only God will open your eyes to his plan and purpose for your life, you are not meant to just be paying your rent. You are meant to own houses. I didn't say you are meant to own a house. What did I say? 
But the watcher of the kingdom of darkness is preventing you from making any progress to fulfill destiny. That's why you are going to pray. Any watcher of the kingdom of darkness over my life and destiny. Father, terminate today in the name of Jesus. Any watcher of the kingdom of darkness over my life and destiny. Terminate today. Terminate, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Terminate, O oh Lord. Terminate, Father. Hey, Rabbas Kakoria Mashata Lenda Itragabo. In the name of Jesus. Terminate, O Lord. Terminate, O Lord. Terminate, O Lord. Any watch of the kingdom of darkness. Terminate today. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Three more prayer points. Number one, you say, Use me, O Lord. And let my glory shine in thee. Use me, O Lord. Let my glory shine in thee. In the name of Jesus. Use me, O Lord. Use me, O Lord. Let my glory shine forth. Let my glory shine forth. Use me, O Lord. Hey, Mareka Pasotole Andaria. Use me, O Lord. Let my glory shine in thee. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Any covering on my destiny. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Ah, open your mouth and pray. Any covering on my destiny. Catch fire. Catch fire. Right now, right now, right now. Any covering on my destiny. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Bezokalima Andaria. Recaporia and robots. Any covering on my destiny. Catch fire right now. Catch fire right now. Catch fire right now. Catch fire. Mabasotolian Ragabo. Eiza Kalabasotolia. In Jesus' name we are praying. Finally, you say, Fire of God. Consume every veil of my glory. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Fire of God. Consume every veil of my glory. In the name of Jesus. Consume. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. We don't have much time. But you know that every one of our services is online on YouTube. The prayer points we have prayed with this afternoon, when you go home, go online and pray those prayers again. If you want, write them down. Because the Lord is doing the work of transformation. Amen. Because you will have a new song. Amen. Because you will have a new testimony. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our seats. Let's have